So we're going to go to the book of Psalms again. Amen. And uh, just want to touch on a couple of things uh, in the book of Psalms that we uh, looked at last week, and then we're going to move on, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and just break this psalm down just a little bit more, okay? Amen. All right. Now, Psalms 23. Psalms 23. This is a powerful psalm because it speaks of the totality of God's impact on our lives if we allow God to be what God wants to be in our lives. Okay? So, let's read it. I'm reading from the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh, I can't wait to get there. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Oh, my God. I can't wait to get there, too. He restoreth my soul. Oh, but I can, I can, I can work that. It don't matter what condition your soul is in, has been in, the God we serve is a restorer. You ever see someone old, old cars? They've been sitting out in the rain, rusted up, just busted up, dead things, tires all messed up. But when you take it to one of those restoration places and they bring that thing back like it was brand new, it looked brand new to the to the person that's just looking at it, but they don't know what it's been through. They don't know the wear and the tear and the and the conflict that it's been through, but they done went to the restoration shop. And the restoration shop got them looking good. You all are looking real good, but don't nobody know what you done been through. Don't nobody know what you done come through. But the Lord knows. That's why you ought to have your mind made up. You ought to keep your eyes straight up, looking at the Lord all the time. Make him your shepherd. Make him your shepherd. I'm glad that God is my shepherd. I need a shepherd. I need somebody to kind of, you know, coach me and guide me and lead me and keep me and make sure I don't go off track. Come on, don't sit there like you know you ain't human. You know we go off track. That devil coming there waving stuff, we going off. Oh, what's that? Whether it's out of curiosity or just out of because what's, that's what we want. All right, let me stop. He restore it. But aren't you glad you got a God that says no matter what condition your soul is in, I can restore it. No matter what condition you allow yourself to get in, I can restore it if you just call on me as your shepherd. Yeah. All right, let me not get too far ahead of myself. Yeah. Let me read this here. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God is vested in you because he's vested in himself. The Holy Ghost is vested in you because he's vested in his ability. Come on, somebody, not to fail. And if he can get willingness out of us, we will never fail. Glory to God. I clear you for excellence in Jesus' name. I clear you for the blessing of God in Jesus' name. I clear you for increase and excess for the glory of God. And when you hit that excess, you're going to give away to those that God needs you to give to. And you're going to tell them, God told me to do this. God blessed me to do this. And you are the recipient of a blessing from God from a child of God. A Christian, one being like Christ. Yea, oh shucks, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. A shadow ain't never done nothing to nobody. And too many Christians get scared of shadows. Because they scared of the shadow maker. I don't care if you see a bear shadow, a lion shadow, or a thief shadow, and turn around and look at the thief. Turn around and look at the bear. Turn around and look at the lion. Do not fear any evil. Do not fear anything. Because the thing you greatly fear will come upon you. That's why. If you fear it, you create it. If you fear it, you release the power of darkness to bring it to your reality. It ain't the universe doing it. It's Satan doing it. If you have faith in it and faith in God, it ain't the universe blessing you. It is the God you trust in that's blessing you that you have made your shepherd. I'm so glad I got a shepherd. I got a shepherd over my life. 
I got a shepherd in my life, and he is shepherding me. You got a shepherd in your life. You got a shepherd over your life. And you got to allow God to shepherd you. Oh, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at what it means to be a shepherd and have a shepherd. All right, let me see. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know why we don't fear no evil? Because we have a shepherd. Our God is not an inactive shepherd. He can be inactive if you don't have doubt. I mean, if you have doubt. He can be inactive if you have fears. He can be inactive if you have rebellion against him. But when you have faith in God and you're submitted to God, when we, glory to God, expect God to be shepherd, then we can go through the valley of the shadow of death. We can face any harsh, any horrible situation, and God will restore, and God will bring us out, and God will bring us up. He will even get us to a place that when we build great faith, we can go through valleys of the shadow of death. We can face all kind of negative attacks from the enemy, and we and know we're stormproof. But you be stormproof not just because you think stormproof. You be stormproof because you know what it means to be stormproof. You have those elements from God operating in your life, and it creates confidence in you. It creates convictions in you. It creates persuasion in you. That when you face challenge and test and storm, you look at the storm and say, you will not bring me to ruin. You will not be successful over me. I don't know how God is going to stop you, whether you go around me, over me, but you're not going through me. We think people don't talk like that. And if they do, they faker, they pretender. But we are contenders. We have the championship, God in our lives. Can I get an amen? amen. Good God Almighty. You gotta believe this. And when you do, and when you stand, I don't care what that devil brings against you. I don't care who he uses. If you can talk to them, like Jesus talked to them Pharisees and scribes, you will walk in that place where the wicked one touches you. Now, you got to understand something. When you start growing in the things of God, when you start growing financially and mentally and emotionally, you begin to get stable. Stuff that's going to rot you like you used to. People around you are either going to be envious and jealous, or they're going to celebrate what God is doing in your life. But they will only celebrate what God is doing in your life when you tell them, this is not me. This is God. This is, hold on. You and I, we got to give the glory to God. This way, people won't get jealous of you. They won't get angry with you. They won't become envious of you. They don't have to deal with your God. Now you can witness to them. I can show you how to get God to do it. I can show you how to get God to do for you what he's doing for me. And when they see us messing up, that's why I have a shepherd. He's a merciful God. He's a kind God. I'm not going to live messed up all my life. I'm not going to be acting messed up all my life. I ain't going to be talking messed up all my life. You ain't going to see me messed up all my life because greater is he that is in me. And I'm getting to know him and allow him to be shepherd. I'll get you right now. You ain't looking at finished problem. But the next time you see me, I'll be better. That's not a statement of arrogance. That's what you got to explain to folks. That's not a statement of arrogance. That's a statement of fact. And I control it. Huh? You arrogant little cuss. No. Because the next time you see me, I'm going to be more willing and obedient to God. And the more willing and obedient you are to God, he said, you shall eat the good of the land. This is guaranteed. This is that blink, 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 blink. I told you, I told you, I was better than that. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. Why won't you get better the next time they see you? When you walk into work tomorrow, you'll walk in better, whether it's you releasing joy, whether it's you doing better work, whether you just kind of go in there groomed up better, whatever. You're going to be better, and you need to tell them, I'm doing this for the glory of God. 
I'm doing this because I am a Christian. And I'm doing this because I've seen a small snapshot of my shepherd. And my shepherd is perfect. My shepherd is excellent. My shepherd is all powerful. My shepherd is all knowing. Who do you know talk like that? Not too many, huh? You know why? It's either because they don't know the shepherd or they don't believe that they can be like the shepherd. As he is, so are we. But you got to believe that. If you don't believe that, it'll never happen in your life. Or if it does, it'll take you 50 years, 60 years. I'm 60 now. I wish I had this when I was 16. Just like this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Look, this is only going to get better. Thou, look at this here. I'm with you in the valley. I'm with you in the trouble. I'm with you there so much that you ain't got to fear what you're facing. You ain't got to doubt what you're dealing with. No, you can just go ahead and you can have confidence. You can have faith. You can have deliverance. And that's what we're experiencing. That's what you're experiencing because you are active with God and you are allowing God to be active with you. Look at this here. Thou, verse 5, y'all there? Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. In the presence of your who? Does anybody have any enemies in here? You can have enemies foreign and abroad. You can have enemies in somebody else's family and even in your own family. Sit down, eat right in their face and smile and praise and glorify the God of heaven and thank God and tell them, God did this. God's doing this. I'm blessed because God's hand is on me. Look, would you just look at somebody and say, I'm blessed because God's hand is on me. See, see, if you say it and you got faith, that great or strong faith, you're going to say it and it's going to intimidate some folks. It's going to shake them up. That's why you got to explain to folks. You got to explain to folks that you're just doing it to the best of your ability like Jesus did. And maybe they'll fall back off of you and put that hatred and that jealousy and that envy on that on something else. Like hating that devil. Change that emotion. Change that whole perspective. Look at you. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Oh, Jesus. Hey, you know what God's doing right now? You may not be sitting at the table yet, but because you have faith and because you won't give up and because you won't give in to the devil and you won't give in to fear and you won't give in to worry and you won't give in to defeat, you are stuck on this here. What are you doing? I'm watching God prepare my table in the presence of my enemy. I'm watching, listen, I'm in the worst scenario of my situation, but guess what? But my faith is stronger than ever because I know that even though it looks like mess, God is preparing a table in the presence of my enemies. My situation is changing right before my eyes. My situation changed when I pray. My situation changed when I release my faith. Your situation changed when you pray and when you ask God to do what he promised. When you found the promise, when you came to church and heard a promise, and he said, God, will you do that for me? God says, it's already done. It's waiting for you. It's waiting for your willingness and obedience. It's waiting for your faith. It's waiting for you to activate strong and great faith and say to me, saith the Lord, I believe because you are my the whole world. You are my shepherd. Look at the transitions. Look at the transitions in this song. From the valley of the shadow of death, he gives us instruction do not fear it. Don't fear the possibility of it. It is a possibility, but don't you fear it. But believe for the miracle. Believe for the opposite. Put faith out there, confidence, conviction, persuasion, that with me you can do all things. And the Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. When you ever, ever choose to do something different, Satan will step in and he will dominate. He will say, I don't care how good you got it, how good you had it, how long you had it, you turn back and you're going to go back. 
You turn back, you're going to go back. And I got, I got news to tell you. This is not good news. The Bible says you are going to be worse. That's why I ain't turning back. I ain't going back. The Bible says, you know, in the book of is it John? It's John or Matthew. The guy that had the demon cast out of him. You know what I mean? Jesus comes in there, casts the devil out of this guy, breaks the power of the devil over this guy, right? Right? And and I think it's Luke. And and he breaks the power of the devil over his life. And then, you know what I mean, swept the guy's life, cleaned up the guy's life, but the guy didn't fill his life with the things of God. He didn't fill up with the power and the glory of God. He just cleaned up. You don't want to be one of those that just clean up and don't fill up. You a pretender, not a contender. You want to clean up and then get filled up. So this guy that got cleaned up, the demon that was cast out, that spirit that plagued his life, that had him so convinced that evil and wickedness was the cool thing, he got kicked out by Jesus because that guy got into the presence of God. He made Jesus shepherd for a minute, but he didn't get filled with the things of God. And when that demon came back, he saw that he was cleaned up, but he wasn't filled up. And the guy said, okay, the last time I was in this person's life dominating them, I got kicked out because they said, get out. And they got Jesus in to kick me out. They used his name. They used his word, but I came back around, house was clean, swept, but empty. They didn't fill up. The guy said, I took a whooping last time, but I'm bringing some of my friends. And the Bible said that he brought seven more spirits worse than himself. Dude got kicked out, he went recruit. Anything that you defeated, Anything that you overcome, that evil spirit that was behind it has gone out. You got victory now, but that evil spirit has gone out, and he's recruiting. That's why the Bible says that the second time that devil took over made the guy seven times worse. That's not you. You're not doing that. You're not going to be seven times worse. You're going to be seven times better, ten times better than you've ever been. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at this here. He says, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup. Brother, you wait till that anointing hits you. Oh, yeah. You wait till when you come into the house of God and you start feeling the presence of God because you praise in his presence. Because you worship in his presence. Because you release faith in his presence. You wait till you get to that place where you're so proficient that while you're coming, you're praising. While you're coming, you're thinking and thanking God. While you're coming, you're expecting God to do something mighty in your midst. When you're coming to church, you're sitting there saying, God, I need a revival. I came to get a touch from you. I came to hear a word from you. God, I need a word. So when I go back to some of them folk I work with, some of them evil influence people, some of them doubt and fool through. I can come in there and walk in, and they're going to see the glory on my face because I was praying on my way. Hallelujah. I know yeah. some of you, you were tomorrow. I was praying before I turned on the computer. And the glory of God on you will give you a word to give to them, and that word will hit them in their spirit. That one, God bless you. That one, hey, you're going to have a great day. That one word of encouragement from you, like God is giving you encouragement today. That one word that you give encouragement to them, and you look at them and say, hey, God told me to say that. The minute you bring God into it, it changes the playing game. It changes the table. It changes how the table is set. Because you know the devil doesn't prepare the table. They got all kinds of stuff on it. But God says the enemy that you face. God says, don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of what they're saying. Because I'm preparing the table. Get your eyes off of what the devil is doing and put your eyes on the table that God is preparing for you so that you can get ready to sit down and mind your mind. Your mind. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. You're about to go up because your mind is made up and you go, come on somebody, I wish I had a I got a couple of minutes in here. Glory to God. Amen. It's all right to shout hallelujah every now and then. Now. Don't shout me out. We're going to see. My cup. Come on. Come on. There's so many things that we can be expecting in life. How about we not expect failure? 
How about we not expect hard times? How about we not expect it to get worse? But how about we expect it, the blessing that is, to run over? How about we expect the power of God to run over in our lives, to flow into overflow? As a choice, it's a choice. Aren't you glad you made that choice? Oh, hallelujah. Look at this. So now he goes on to say, he goes on to say, surely, oh man, listen, I told you it gets better, right? Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. That word means hunt you down. Oh, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Shall follow you all the days of your life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I'm, not, I'm not just doing this here just to make my situation better for a moment. I want my life better forever. I'm trying to prepare for eternity now. You and I, we are preparing for eternity now. We want the joy now that we're going to have for eternity. And he's close enough to it. Come on, somebody. I want the blessing now that God has promised for eternity. I want a taste of it. Yeah. And you know what the scripture says? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you make the choice to taste, God says the next step is you're going to start seeing. Tasting in the things of God is when you're willing to hear and you're willing to obey, then you're going to see. Like he says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Oh, taste and see. If you taste and yield to the things of God, then you're going to start seeing the changes take place in your life. And they are there to change permanently. You're not going back. All right, okay. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, sometimes we go to church, you may hear something that touches on an area that you're developing. You know what I mean? You got a picture by faith, but you don't have physical evidence of that picture. You know what I mean? The proof of that picture, the, the carnal proof. And sometimes when you hear messages that, that deal with the areas that you're developing in, the devil will come in and say, see, you're sorry, no good. You're a fake. You're a pretender. You ain't no pretender. You say, shut up, man. I'm in the process. I'm getting better every single day. Messages like this here don't vex my spirit, don't get me negative and discouraged. Messages like this say, oh, God's talking to me. God is saying, the best is in your hand. Don't quit now. You at step 10. You got four more steps to go. Don't stop now. Don't give up now. Don't start thinking that you can't. Don't start thinking that you're sorry. Don't start thinking that you're defeated. No, you say, I'm closer than I've ever been. And that's if it's a 10-step process, and you're only at step one. You're closer than you've ever been. Why? Because you were at step zero. You weren't even in the process at one time. Now you're in the process. you got to go through that process. And while you're going through, the Lord is your shepherd. He is your shepherd. Y'all ready to learn what a shepherd is and what a shepherd does and why you and I, why we need a shepherd? We need shepherding. The Lord is. Remember last week? We talked about the Lord is. If you don't believe that God is, then you're not going to get all those rest of those verses working proficiently in your life. You got to first believe that he is. There are some things about the isness of God. The Lord is risen. Aren't you glad he rose from the grave? The Lord is faithful and just to forgive. Aren't you glad that he's faithful and just to forgive when we ask for forgiveness? The Lord is able. He is able to do. Aren't you glad you got a shepherd that knows how to do some things? You know how to get some things done? That there ought to cause you never to be afraid of anything. Never to be afraid of going for it. Never to be afraid of, of, of standing up against injustices and wrong. You just need to know how to say it, how to challenge it, how to stop it. Half of it is not in what you say, it's how you say it. And then how you tag it. So if you say it and it's tagged like it's coming from you directly, you're going to catch heat. But if you tag it, this is what the Bible says. Well, then who are they going to be mad at? They're going to get mad at you? Oh, you got another tag, girl. Why are you getting mad at me? I'm just telling you what God said. Your beef is not with me. Your beef is with God. And your problem is not your beef with God. Your problem is you. It's your unwillingness to make him shepherd. In every area. Oh, he's shepherd in every area. 
and he shepherded me in a lot of areas. There's some areas he says, okay, you got this one down pat, you do it. How many of y'all glad you got those areas in your life? Well, I got this one, man, and he don't talk you how to do this, and I'm good. I'm good. All right, so let me see. <laughs> John 10 says, he's a good shepherd. John 10 says, he's a good shepherd. Right? And, and John uh, ain't lying. He said, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Aren't you glad you got a shepherd that laid down his life for you? You know you love when somebody's willing to die for you. Sacrifice you. You know you love when you got people in your life that's willing to sacrifice for you. Hello, somebody. But you can't just want people in your life that's always sacrificing for you. You've got to be willing to sacrifice for them. Yeah. And if they don't know this, don't look at them and say, who raised you? Don't Google that. That's the system. But you look at them and say, you only got half of them. Yeah. And i got to teach you this other half. Hey, if you're dealing with people at your job, they whacked out and crazy and evil and wicked. Listen, they didn't get there by themselves. They had help. Satan sent a lot of people in their life to create that mentality, to create that behavior, to create what you're feeling. But God has sent you in there to teach them a better way. And that better way is Jesus. So they got to learn. But you got to be able to explain to them, you're not so much a bad person as you just have bad ways. But when a man's ways please the Lord, it will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. And God's got you there to share that with him. Hey, you tired all this rubbish you dealing with? Change your ways. Change your ways. Change your outcome. Change your ways. Change your enemy. Okay. I thought I could take that. I think y'all thinking about that. I see y'all ready to deal with this here. So the Lord is, okay? He is faithful, Hebrews chapter 10, 23, right? He is risen, Matthew 28, 6, right? He is able, Ephesians 3 20. Oh, God, Mike. Y'all need another one? Y'all need another one? Don't want to know? He got you. He is your shepherd because you chose him. Now, let's look at this word shepherd. God's got a lot of work to do. God's got a lot of work. I know he's got a lot of work to do. Oh, 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 oh. I forgot this one. Hebrews 11 6. He is rewarder. He is a rewarder. A rewarder. He pays. People with blessings who diligently seek him. Where we going? That's Hebrews chapter 6, I mean 11, 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe, must first believe that God, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That word to believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of him that diligently seeks him. Hey, 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 hey. Get all of these thoughts of doubt that God won't do it, that you're too bad. That's the devil talking to you. Throw those things down. You have been made able because God was able to get your attention, to get you to make God your shepherd. All right, I don't know about you. I'm not ashamed to say I need a shepherd. I'm not ashamed to say I got. A shepherd. I'm gonna tell you the truth, all right. I don't know if you if you can bear with this when this is just I do not say amen. I Eddie Haynes need a shepherd. Any of y'all need a shepherd? I need a shepherd. Can you imagine me without a shepherd? I don't even want to imagine me without a shepherd. I've seen too many movies. <laughs> Ooh, sweet Jesus. But again, John 10 says, Jesus talking, I am the good shepherd. This is how you know that he's a good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. That's a shepherd. That's not a heart. Satan is a heart. Satan is a pretender. He wants to pretend like he's got you. He wants to pretend like he's going to hook you up. But when he gets you right where he wants you, he kills you. Let's ask Michael Jackson. With me. John Lennon sold their lives to the devil. He gave them fame, fortune, and he killed them. Used them up, you killed them. And what's even worse? DMX, 
We do the same thing with little Nas. Pray for little Nas. I believe little Nas will be saved. You just got to make the right choice. You make the wrong choice right now. But all these guys, this is what pisses me off about safety. He builds these celebrities up, especially in that particular industry. He uses them up, drugs them out, pimps them out, then he kills them, and he makes money on the back end. Because when they die, people go and look at their music, look at their films or whatever, they buy them, it's all about the money. But you got a shepherd that'll never pimp you out. You got a shepherd that'll never just use your life up without rewarding you with eternal reward. What is Satan's eternal reward to his minions, his servants, the lake of fire, if they don't get right with Jesus Christ? Right, so a shepherd. It is the Hebrew word raw off a raw wow. Don't get your mind on the Hebrew pronunciation of the word. Let's look at what it means. The word shepherd. This is what God is saying to us. God says, I want to tend your life. In other words, the first definition is, definition is tend the flock. In other words, God says, I want to tend your life. I want to oversee your life. I want to make sure that everything in your life, at the end of your life, I can say, well done, good and faithful servant, and you can say, thank you, Lord, you've been good to me. Number two, to pasture it. So number one, to tend it, that means to take the responsibility for everything that can go wrong, for everything that they're not, I'm going to take the responsibility and I'm going to make sure that I get them to the intended goal. Not only the end result goal, but the processorial goal. That is, to bring you to a place that in life you can say, he is good and his mercy has endured forever. Walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fearing no evil, because his word and his spirit, he was with me. God is with you. Don't be afraid. God is with you. Don't be afraid of success. God is with you. Definitely don't be afraid of failure. That's not your plan from God. That's not the plan from God. You are stormproof, and you are now prevented from ruin when you operate in the kingdom of God. Stuff will come at you and bounce off of you. Come on. To pasture it. Now, when I, when I saw this here, I said, Holy Ghost, I need help. What do you mean pasture it? So the Hebrew has a definition, pasture. So I went to the English definition because I got the root from what it meant in the original language. Here's what a pasture is. A land covered with grass and other low plants suitable for grazing animals, especially cattle or sheep. I said, okay, I know what it means, but God, what are you trying to say? And God said, I am not only taking on the responsibility to tend to your life, but I am also taking on the responsibility to be the nutrition, to be the food, to be the very necessity of your life that will bring you strength and bring you to that place of excellence and victory and being that more than a conqueror. God said, if you taste, you will see. God said, I'm not just going to oversee you, but I'm going to be everything you need to grow. Everything you need to flourish. Or in other words, my DNA is in you. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. Don't believe what people have said about you. Don't believe even the, the things you've done in your past. Don't think it's over. Believe what you're doing now. Believe in who you're serving now. Is he your And you got to change your whole way of thinking. You got to change your whole goal orientation. Because whatever you put your hands to, when the shepherd says, go ahead, you have my permission. Or in other words, you've been, you've been cleared. You know when you're an airplane at an airport, airport your airplane pilot at an airport, you just can't go take off and land it when you want to. You got to check in with air traffic. And they got to clear you to take off and clear you to land. And God says, I'm better than air traffic control. I've cleared you to succeed. I have not cleared you to fail. Yeah. I 
I am come that you might have life. The thief wants to clear you to fail. He wants to clear you to be and have stuff stolen from you and killed and destroyed. God said, I have not appointed you. I have not ordained you for rule. I've ordained you to be the head, not the tail. I've ordained you to represent me. I've ordained you to be able to say, I have a shepherd. And he loves me. Even when I'm kind of wet. Aren't you glad about that? I'm glad about that. Okay, so what is here? So, Pastor, God is on land covered with crack, good crack, low shrub, so that you can get to him. You ain't got to work hard and break your neck. My yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. In other words, God said, when I come on your life and begin to direct you and guide you, that's the easy work. And my burdens, what I ask you to do, is a light burden. Why? Because I am your strength, your shepherd, your teacher, your instructor. I am the one that's going to, when I relate to you and you relate to me, I am good Christ. I'm good pastor. I got the good stuff. My stuff is good. You start reading your bird with a different attitude. You start reading this word like it's food for your spirit, which it is. Food for your soul, which it is, then you'll have a different outcome. When you say, God, help me to understand what you're trying to say to me. Now you've humbled yourself. Now you've done that right there. You got on one knee and you've humbled yourself with this sword in your hand. Shepherd. So, number three, the word shepherd means God says, I want to feed you. I want to feed you life experiences that's going to keep you glorifying me. Number four, I want to graze with you. I want to get you to where you graze, where you receive the blessing and you're not afraid. I know there's a wolf out there. Man, yeah. I can't even enjoy my food because I'm scared. I can't, I can't enjoy my food because I'm worried. I can't enjoy my food because my fear and my worry got me stressed. I'm sitting here trying to eat. I'm sitting here getting blessed. I'm sitting here doing it, but I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job. I'm afraid I'm going to come in there too blessed and too unstressed that it's going to get these folks around me upset. They're going to try to undermine me. Why are you doing that when he set a table in the presence of your enemies? You and I, we got enemies. It is great when God shows you your enemy, and you just skip in there unafraid, unworried, unmoved, because you've already prepared the atmosphere. You walk in there telling them, I just love the Lord. I ain't going to suck it, but I just love the Lord. And I've learned some things about the Lord. We've got made some promises. Those that curse me, we will curse them. Come on, <laughs> All right, that was childish. I know. That was in the flesh. But when you know him like that, that he got your back, you let other folks, you come in here and get side with him. You will want to deal with me and not the God I serve. I'll get fleshly and carnal with you. Cuss you out, put some lead in you. But the God I serve will put your ragged behind, ignorant, and unwilling to bow to God and change your ways into the lake of fire. All right, I'm going to repent after this. You mess with me, I'm going to send you there quick. Then I'm going to repent. I'm going to say, God, you know they pushed me. I try to keep that cat down. You know, I go golf. You know, golf too. I got three golfers that go with me every time I go golf. There's the good guy that hits the ball straight. There's, there's Ed number two that shakes it to the right into the woods. Then there's Ed number three that hits more dirt than ball. <laughs> them two guys, I try to keep them locked down. I've had to ask God, God help me. I need to help. In life, 
You're going to need to ask God, God, I need you to be my shepherd. Because this fool will make me act like what I don't want to act. Don't act like y'all that. Don't act like y'all. You're the pastor. Really? Yes, I am. And you're a Christian. And don't sit there like you ain't never wanted to cuss somebody out last week. Now, not this morning, y'all preparing to come to church. Can we be real? We are what we are because we have a pastor, Jesus. We have a shepherd, Jesus. We have an apostle. Jesus. We have a prophet. Jesus. We have an evangelist. Jesus. We have a teacher. Jesus. The Holy Ghost. And they are always at work trying to shepherd us. Bringing us the best that God has offered. We just got to work on the willingness and the obedience part. We got to be the obedience. We got to follow. All right, let's go on. Let me, let me get this here. This, this single minute back. Okay, look. To graves. So God said, I'm going to get you the best to eat. Then number Number five, to rule. What? To rule? Yeah. I didn't say it. He said it. I repeat it. Yeah, I repeat it. I repeat it. And go keep repeating it until we get it. But before we can get it, I got to get it. He is my ruler. You make him your shepherd, you made him your ruler. You said, wait a minute. I didn't sign up for that. You, you get in with the program. You just don't know what it means to have a shepherd. Now you're learning. Now it's going to be easy for you to accept God shepherding your life. Okay? Number six, to teach. Look at You can't have good rulership unless you have someone that will give you good teaching. At your job. These people rule your life for those they like. It's better when they teach you your job so that you can do it successfully so that they don't have to spend so much time exercising rulership over you that they've taught you and you got it. Now they can fall back and do something else, even if it's putting their feet up on the table and relaxing. You've been taught. You now don't have someone having to rule actively in your life telling you what to do and how to do. They done told you what to do, they done showed you how to do it, now get in there and do it like they ain't never seen it done before. Then you look at them and they look at you and say, well, how come you work like that? You're a sucker. No, I'm a Christian. I work as unto the Lord. And I work as unto the Lord because he said he would reward me, and he has, and I'm expecting you to reward me, and I'm looking for you to do it. I love somebody. Your best worker up in here, you need to reward me. I'm the best one in the family, you need to treat me right. I love more than anybody, you need to treat me right. And to treat me anything less than that is satanic or ignorance. But why don't you? Look to the Lord, this is His word. I did that to the devil, I did that to you. Who is here? To teach, look at number seven, number seven, number seven, you ready? To associate with as a friend. This is God to you. We're going to deal with how you should respond to God. And I mean, no reciprocity. So when you read it, remember we talked earlier, giving and receiving. You can't be in a relationship where all you do is receive. You've got to be in a relationship where you give and receive. That's not healthy relationship. The friendship of God, God says, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to bring the best that I have. It's going to impact you to bring out the best that I put in you. I know God put some good stuff in you. God put some good stuff in us. And it's coming out. Because we're letting it come out. To associate with as a friend. Aren't you glad that he's a friend and not somebody that's some, some lord monger, some, some warlord, some, you know what I mean? God is a friend. Your friend. My friend. Our friend. You need to be thinking that. Number eight, to keep company with. How many of you know some folks, they ain't never got down this list? They don't even know 
and love God as friends. They don't even have emotional feelings toward God as friend, as buddy. They don't even talk to God as friend and buddy. They just talk to God as Lord and Savior. There's so much more to a shepherd. Ow! There's so much more to our shepherd. And God is saying, in these days, I need you to understand me in a clearer picture because you're about to see some crazy stuff, and I don't want y'all freaking out, and I don't want y'all going bananas over what I said is going to happen in the last of the last days. I want y'all to be cool, calm, collective, and witnessing and telling folk and getting people saved. Bring them to me, saying the Lord. Give you something to do to keep your mind off of vaccination and martial law and why you always smile? I just came out purpose from my shepherd. I just found out that he wants to associate with me as a friend. <laughs> to keep company with. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is the Lord is trying to keep company with me. You ever have somebody that you know? They want to be around you. They want to keep you company with you. Just because they love you. You need to do more than survive. And explain to them why you're doing it. I'm doing it because the Lord is my shepherd. Number nine, to make friendship with. You know, God says, I want to come and I'm going to do some things, and the blessings that I'm doing in your lives is because I want to make friends with you. Even when we mess up, God says, I'm not coming to beat you down. I'm coming to ensure in your thinking and your understanding that we are friends. So this blessing that you got when you was wilding out is me making friends again. So you gotta understand how this thing works. Because crazy people be like, oh, sorry. I, I gotta act a fool and get blessed. And think that they can take that on as a lifestyle, as a relationship trait with God. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. The devil is lying to you. He's deceiving you. And I'm turning the light on that. You can't do that. You repent, you turn away from it, you stay away from it. Come on, somebody. Especially if you want to bring a blessing. This gets better. This gets better. What do you say? To be a special friend. Now, God said, I just wanted to bring to you. I want to be special. How about that? About Okay. We're going to pick up here. Can y'all get anything out of this? I mean, because see, I've learned that when y'all like this, y'all eat. You ever see somebody with a good plate of bread get over some, some vegetables and fruit? <laughs> It's good to them. Hey, you don't want to eat and experience the blessing of God in fear. Fear of losing. Fear of somebody breaking in and stealing. Fear of somebody killing you. You say, how do you change your fear? Well, this came into my spirit. God said, Listen, listen. He says, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. If you have a Receive it physically, God has got it in preparation. Rejoice. 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 And hey, and hey, and if the devil's trying to take you out of your lane, repent, get back in your lane and stay in it. And keep moving forward. Get back in your lane and keep moving forward. I'm just going to give these real quick. I'm not going to expound. I'm just going to read the rest of the week and write it down. Get, write it down. It's only, there's only two more. To be a special friend is number 10. And then the last one, 11, a sharing house. Okay, that's sharing house, not, not, not just a sharing house. We want to be a sharing house, but we want to be a sharing house. Y'all know what a sheep gets sheared? A sheep has to, they grow wool like crazy. If you feed them right, if you pasture them right, if you shepherd them right, they gonna stay. That wool is gonna grow and grow and grow and grow and grow like almost eternally. So you have to have a shearing. There has to be a shearing house, a place 
where each of those lambs, each of those sheep, when they hear you a certain limb, you got to cut it off. you got to cut it back. Amen. Because if you don't, if they go wandering off, put all that wool on, they're easy prey for any predator to fall. Then, anybody ever have a wool, a, 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 what do they call them, a sheepskin coat? Anybody ever have a sheepskin coat? Those who have a coat thing. Sheep wool is heavy. It is heavy. So when them sheep got all that wool on them because they haven't been sheared properly or sheared at all, they move like this here. They just all bog back. And when the wolf come, oh, I got that. I ain't even got to worry about it. I ain't got to worry about it. Because you got too much wool on Guess what time it is? It's stewardship time. You got too much money. You got too much money. And God said it's time to share 10% off. And some offering. And some love gifts for the pastor. And some mission. Time to share you all so you can grow some more. See, everything has purpose. Everything that God does has purpose. When you, when you let God be shepherd in your finances, in your stewardship, he shares off things. He's like, I'm not going to make you fall. I'm not going to make you fall. I'm not going to cut ball spots in. But I'm going to shear you even. If you ever see a sheep after they've been sheared, go Google it. When they come out to shear now, You know what they're ready to do? Into the process again. Take me to the pasture. And they eat again. They grow that here. They usually don't grow too much bigger. Once they get full age, once they get full age, they ain't growing no more. They don't need more bone. They don't need more hoof. They don't need more tongue. They just keep growing wool. Because they're fed properly, they're cared for, they're protected. And God says, I'm going to do this next to me. I am your shepherd. You shall not want. Have you ever gotten to the place where I, I, I don't want no more shoes? <laughs> I want no more dresses. I want no more glasses. I want no more jewelry. I'm good. So God said, Now that I got you full, now it's time for me to shear you. And not just take your time, but share you and what I've done to you and with you to the world so that they can come to the master sharing and begin the process. Come on, let's see what this word says to you people. Did y'all get anything I said? Yeah. 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 Yeah.